And so a lot of things going on this week. Uh, obviously, these materials were were prepared and sent out to all of you over a week ago. Um, yesterday, uh, every day for the last month, Diane and I, we go to Google and we type in CFPB or Supreme Court CFPB, hoping to see that they're making progress towards some sort of decision. Well, yesterday we did it and they made a decision. And so the decision made yesterday was that the Supreme Court ruled on the CFPB's funding. Uh, long story short, at least to begin with here, is that the CF or the Supreme Court ruled that the way that the CFPB is funded is deemed to be constitutional. And they did so by a vote of seven to two. So the CFPB wins or lives, however you wanted to look at that. Because had the CFPB lost, there's a whole lot that would have been uh, thrown up into the air and there'd have been chaos. Uh, and not just 1071, the, a lot of it had to do with mortgage lending. Uh, what would we have done with all those rules, all those enforcement actions? And so um, I, I think they, they they chose to take the path of least resistance here, to, to, to say it's super simple. Um, and they voted to, to keep the CFPB the, the way it is, essentially, that, 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 that the funding is deemed to be constitutional. Now, I want to remind you that this court case that the Supreme Court voted on, it was never about 1071 directly. It was always about the CFPB's funding. Okay, the 1071 law goes back to the Dodd Frank Act, okay, Act of Congress, okay, signed and passed, and so on and so forth. It would take an Act of Congress to do away or adjust Section 1071. Now, there's been a lot of people that have talked about how they don't care for the way. Section 1071 was carried out with the regulation written by the CFPB. And that was how they hoped by challenging the CFPB and their funding, they would possibly get a rewrite of the 1071 regulation. Well, that's not going to happen the way they thought it was. Now, could there still be challenges to the CFPB 1071 regulation? Possibly. But what we all need to do at this point is say, all right, there's been a hard reset here. And now we need to move forward. And I'll give you the dates and everything here in a minute. But remember, this was not about 1071 directly. It was about the CFPB and how they were funded. Well, that's been decided. Okay? It's constitutional. And so 1071 now moves and shakes forward okay, as it was originally intended, but with updated dates. Could there be challenges? Could there be hurdles thrown in front of it as we move forward? Possibly. Okay? That happens all the time with things. Okay? But right now, we need to now move forward towards these new dates that we'll give you here in a moment. So the dates, <clears throat> if you recall, the dates were tiered. There was an October 1, 2024 group. That was tier one. There was an April 1, 2025 group, tier two, and a January 1, 2026 group. That's tier three. Those tiers were all based on 2022 and 2023 origination volumes. Okay. I, they just five minutes before Diane came on, Diane and I came on. They dropped, they, the CFPB dropped a notice of proposed rulemaking to adjust the mandatory compliance dates. Um, I have not had a chance to read it yet. Diane, chime in if you can. But what we know, as a matter of fact, is what the new dates are. So I'll start with those. So if you are an October 1st, Tier 1 Mandatory Compliance State Bank, you are now July 18th, 2025. So October 1, 2024 becomes July 18th, 2025. If you are an April 1st, 2025 bank, hey, you are now a January 16, 2026 bank. That's your mandatory compliance date. Again, April 1 becomes January 1. I'm sorry, April 1st becomes January 16th, 2026. If you were a January 1, 2026 financial institution, that was the original tier three, you are now an October 18th. 2026 financial institution. Again, January 1, 2026 becomes October 18, 2026. So it's roughly that nine and a half month gap between when the Supreme Court was originally given the case and now when they've made their decision. It wasn't done in whole months. It was done in number of days. That's why you have the 18th, the 16th, and the 18th relative to those three dates that I give you. Again, Diane hopefully has shared in the chat a link to that document. Now, what I didn't get a chance to read and what Diane and I were talking about earlier is the original regulation based those dates off of origination volumes that occurred in 22 and 23. Diane, I'm going to ask you to come in here. Is there anything you saw at a glance that, that seems to give indication that those have adjusted? Did they remain the same? Or maybe we don't know yet. I 
do not believe we know. The CFPB on their website does talk about an interim final rule, so there may yet be more to come. Okay. So why do I bring that up? Well, if we leave the, the origination volumes from 2022 and 2023 in place, we're now going to use old information. Because remember, the earliest somebody's going to go now is July of 2025. That means you're ignoring completely 2024 data. Well, what if what if my volume went up? What if my volume went down? And the same can be said for the other tiers. And so by not using the most recent data, it, maybe you could have, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe you could have bought yourself one. Hold on. I've had a cold this week, and so I'm fighting that a little bit here. My, I, what I was going to say is, you know, if, if they stay the same and your volume went up or down, that could change things, right? If they change it, it could also change things. And so we need to we need to hear from them. And are we going to use the original volumes or are they going to update them? Update the updating them isn't necessarily a good or a bad thing either, because. Again, you could have to go sooner. You could have to go later. You could even be out if you fell below the volume threshold. So some things to, to stay tuned on there. Obviously, there's going to be more analysis on this. Uh, this just dropped this morning. We'll take a closer look at it. Um, I'll give you some more take on kind of where we're going with this at the conclusion of the program today. But that's what we know. We know, matter of fact, what the new dates are. Now we just got to figure out which date you belong to. Um, one of the big reasons for that would be the 12-month practice time frame uh, associated with restricted data collection. Remember, you can only collect restricted data, the business ownership status and demographic information for the 12 months that precedes your mandatory compliance date. Well, the earliest one is July 18th. Okay, between now and July 18th of this year, hopefully we figure out what date you are. And if you, if you belong to that one, that's when that 12 months is going to start. Some of you may not be prepared for that, but you're going to want to take as much advantage of that time frame as possible because a lot of that's going to be new compared to what you're doing today. So that's what we know so far. Stay tuned. We'll keep bringing it here as we learn more. 